Uh, I now like to recognize the ranking, acting ranking member uh, of the committee, Mr. Barra, for his opening statement. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Chabot, and um, for calling this important hearing about the administration's fiscal year 2015 priorities for South Asia. Our policy at Asia, as you have already mentioned, is at a critical juncture, and we must reassure our allies and partners that we are committed to the region, particularly India. India remains a strategic partner and geopolitical partner for Washington. This month, as you have already mentioned, India launched its six-week election campaign to democratically elect its next leader. Now, this is a country of over 1.2 billion individuals and more than 800 million um, eligible voters. This is democracy in action. It obviously is a massive undertaking, but it only underscores the importance of India as an ally, as the world's largest responsible and thriving democracy. And regardless of who wins the election, I think it is an opportune time for the United States to broaden our ties with India and reestablish a trajectory of growth um, that was remarkable in the last decade. We also have an opportunity with um, a new U.S. ambassador to India who can also help pave the way toward resettling ties and strengthening our economic relationship. As you know, I have mentioned previously in previous hearings, India is one of our top 20 trading partners. Trade between the United States and India now tops nearly um, $100 billion annually in goods and services. And as the Vice President um, mentioned, there is no reason that we can't get that trajectory to quintuple over this next decade and take it from $100 billion to $500 billion. Benefits both countries and benefits and strengthens our ties. And it is in our strategic interest, um, which go far beyond our own borders. India also, you know, working with USAID and, and others, has now gone from a traditional aid recipient to becoming a true peer-to-peer -peer partner that is able to harness its own strengths and capabilities and partner with the United States. You know, the administration in India are working on tackling various developmental, developmental meant challenges in other countries. For example, both India and the United States are working closely together to mitigate food insecurity in Africa. With USAID's assistance, India has enthusiastically jumped in to host and train around 180 African agriculturists. The farmers are taught agricultural best practices that lead to sustainability and make their farms more productive. India also, as the Chairman has mentioned, has played a critical role and will continue to play a critical role um, in economic and infrastructure development in Afghanistan. The trilateral relationship between the United States, India and Afghanistan is incredibly important to help maintain the stability of the region, particularly um, in 2014 as the United States um, goes through its transition. In addition, um, India is incredibly important in the interconnectivity of the region um, and with its neighbor and partner countries. It can provide geopolitical stability by promoting trade, building infrastructure, and doing business with its partners. Um, in addition, our people-to-people -people contact is also extremely important. More than 50 percent of India's population is under the age of 30 and approximately 150 million people are eligible to vote for the first time this year. Since India has one of the world's youngest populations, we should also focus on helping India build its system of higher education, both um, its universities but also its trade and technical capacity. This is a dividend that not only benefits both India but also um, the, the benefit to the United States would, would be priceless. Um, one possibility arising from investing in Indian higher education would be to provide our students more opportunities to study in India as well, thereby strengthening both our cultural and economic ties while also building India's workforce. As a proud Indian American, I look forward to intensifying our alliance with India by fostering innovation, education, security and economic engagement. I want to thank um, Assistant Secretary Biswal and Acting Administrator Rollins for joining us today, and I look forward to your testimony. And with that, I yield back, Chairman.